Hello everybody. Today I'm going to do a cervical cone or a leap biopsy. Uh, cervix, uh, this particular case has uh, carcinoma in situ, grade two. Um, and, and this one is unoriented. So this is what I have right here. It's a tan pink to brown annular portion of soft tissue with a central patent lumen um, so basically, if this was oriented, I would still handle it the same. Um, I would just section the, the cone in a clockwise fashion, starting at the 12 o'clock, typically. And um, so here, what I'll do is I'll actually put only one piece of tissue in each cassette uh, versus you could do maybe the 12 to 3 o'clock in one cassette, the 3 to 6 o'clock in one cassette six to nine o'clock in one cassette and then again nine to twelve o'clock in the last cassette four cassettes but um, we don't have a lot of faith in the histology so i just leave it one piece per cassette to make sure everything gets oriented right so basically this is the way i'm going to do it received in formal labeled quote cervical leaf cone close quote is a 1.8 by 1.8 six by 0 0.7 cm tan pink to brown annular soft tissue displaying a 1.0 by 0 0.7 cm central patent os period the specimen is partially surfaced by a tan pink comma smooth glistening mucosa period the specimen is unoriented period the specimen is inked blue along the endocervical aspect, comma, black along the ectocervical aspect and serially sectioned in a clockwise manner. Period. The specimen is submitted in its entirety sequentially in cassettes A1 through A12. Period. Okay, so the inking is basically I'm going to ink blue on the endocervical area, which is the inner rim of the hole. And then I'll ink black on the resection margin of the remainder of the specimen. And so when I take my sections, what we're hoping to do is get a representative of the blue and black and the mucosa all in one section every time. Uh, not every leap you'll be able to do that. Some of these things come uh, in pieces. Um, some of them are thick and thin in areas. This thing is pretty symmetrical all the way around, so that's mainly why I decided to do a video of this. This is a, a good, perfect example of what a leap should look like. Again, I still like to have things oriented. It just makes things easier that way. When a colpo biopsy at three o'clock was positive previously, then I should expect the leap to show the three o'clock to be positive. So it just makes a nice report, but uh, we can't make the gynecologist do oriented every time. So we just do the best we can. And sometimes these things will come and they'll be opened. So it'll be a C-shaped um, specimen. And they'll say opened at 3 o'clock or opened at 12 o'clock. And then you know that the area where it's the, the loop is broken will be that 3 o'clock or 12 o'clock, whichever. And so you'll have your orientation that way. Um, here they'll use a, a stitch designating 12 o'clock more than um, anything. So we've inked the, let me show you here, we've inked the inner endocervical margin blue, we've inked the outer ectocervical margin black, and there's our mucosa in there, and now I'm going to section it. So it's also tricky, you want to make sure that you section it very systematically, because I want to end up with exactly 12 sections. So depending on how big it is, you need to um, make your section. So, and so this is what I want to see. Okay, we have the ectocervical margin, the endocervical margin, and then the mucosa is on the inside there.
Okay, and so you saw what I did is I actually cut the leap circle perfectly in half. So that leaves me, should be six pieces for the theoretically 12 to six o'clock. And then it should, I should have six more pieces for the six to 12 o'clock on the nine o'clock aspect. So again, I need to do six sections of this. You can see this piece is a little bit fragmented, um, but you just kind of do the best you can. And so the perfect section we're looking for is like this. It's black, it's blue, and it's mucosa. And that's how you do cervical leap. So some other things that I do to make it easier for histology is I write the number of pieces on the side of the cassette. And so that's what I've done here. And then I'll also put in a little piece of uh, paper that says on edge to show the histotech that I want this on edge just in case the piece has shifted in the cassette while it's been processing. And I, I do those things on most biopsies and I write the number of pieces on every biopsy cassette anyway. So obviously I only do one piece for the leap per cassette so I'll write one on all the cassettes.